Right, so we've done the uh, new plants we brought yesterday. I sort of talked you through them. I said I was going to arrange them just in pots in this uh, area at the bottom of the garden here. So that's what I've done. So this is nothing. There's no natural setup here. So like I say, they're they're in pots. I'll try to stick to blue pots as much as I can. And we've just got some old logs along the front, and some stones just to give it a bit more of a, a natural feel. There's plenty of space for lots of little pots if I can I need to add to it. But so this is the, the setup as it is at the moment. So this is like I say quite a, a shady area here. So we've got the Sheffield area at the back there. Not too big. Hostas, I say big. They're they're not overly big at the moment, but they they will get big in a couple of years. And I didn't really want to get them hammered by slugs by putting them in the ground, so I thought I've got more of a chance to keep them looking quite nice in pots. So I've, I've obviously up potted everything to give them a bit more root space to spread out and give them a good feed. And I've just put some slug pellets along the top just, just to try and intercept any slugs or snails that try to get to them so hopefully they'll look nice for this season and then obviously when they die down I'll uh, put them to the side somewhere and then in the spring they start popping up I'll chuck them in the ground somewhere else this is just a temporary sort of uh, display for this year so like I say, we've got the Hosta T-Rex, which gets massive, and we've got the Blue Mammoth, which will get very big also. Chef Laoto Waniano at the back. We've got the Begonia Grandis, with the big leaves and the, the red underside got some sort of standard bedding begonias as well either side I've tried to sort of not keep it too formal but just sort of balance it out a bit and we've got some rex begonias either side as well we've got the stromanthes or tricolor calathea there white and green flecking with the red underside then we've got the uh, geraniums either side there so i think you know nice uh, colorful foliage they're not looking too bad that's the sort of a uh, shady area a bit more light at the front for the stuff that wants it and like I say plate your space with some uh, the smaller pots to pop in between and I can always shuffle about at the front and get some more pots in there just to fill it out and I've got some more plants later on so that's how that looks like I say this is a uh, quite a nice sunny day today a bit of cloud nice warm temperatures Unfortunately, we're going to get a bit of a cool weekend. It's a shame because I wanted to, to really plant out some uh, some of the elephant ears and that type of uh, more tropical planting, but I think I'll leave it till next week. There's no point sort of putting stuff out when it's uh, you're going to get a cold couple of days. Yeah, so the weekend is looking a bit. I wouldn't say cold, but a bit cool. But yeah, I really wanted to sort out my little bog filter here. Um, I normally plant this up with uh, a couple of big canners at the back and uh, sort of elephant ears at the front. And we've already got loads of these, uh, these sort of pond plants, the bog loving plants, arrowheads, they come up every year. Quite, they are quite nice plants to be fair, they, they look quite nice, do get quite big leaves on them. 
but yeah, I'll be pulling all them out and getting the, the elephant ears in there at some point. So when I divided my uh, pink china up, collocation pink china, there's lots of little tiny nublets on the rhizome, so I broke them off and popped them up individually. So we're starting to get some growth on them now. Really small, but they soon grow. So yeah, I've just been keeping them on the top here with the, the flow of water going through the roots, so that gives them all the moisture they want and, and plenty of nutrients with the fish waste going through. So yeah, with, I know I said it before, with colocasia, you really do want to get them, uh, keep their feet damp. They do love water, and if you can actually put them in a aquatic setting when the temperatures are high enough you'll get the best growth out of them pink china is no different um, you know, most well basically all collocasia will want wet feet obviously alocasia like to be a bit more on a dry side so I wouldn't use alocasia in this sort of uh, setting but but yeah collocasia they seem to do really well in this situation, if you've got a, a pond or a water garden with a waterfall or something like that, you can you got moving water is ideal, and there they really this, the growth will really respond well to that. You'll get the best growth out of them. I've had a, this is your standard collocasia escalente. You plant one in the ground, and I put one in this situation. And uh, there's just no comparison. They're double the size in the in the bog filter with the like I say, just literally moving water and uh, plenty of nutrients with the fish waste going through there, and they they really do respond well to that. Bit off topic, yeah. So basically, just wanted to show you the the setup I've uh, done with the new plants I bought yesterday. So that's how that looks. That's a, another bit of the garden sorted so yeah let's say stage at a time and maybe next weekend when I do get a lot of the tropicals planted in I'll do a full garden tour to see how it sort of all ties together but um we'll leave it at that I think I might do a front garden tour later on just to I think everything's sort of more or less taken off there so We'll see what that looks like, so stay tuned for that one. Alright, thanks for watching, and hope to see you on the next one.